Hey everyone, welcome back to another group selection show breakdown. I am here with Kingdom. I, of course, am Icon. Thank you guys so much for checking out another one of these videos. Stage four is in the books, and we are now moving on to stage five. And one of the most interesting parts of every one of these stages is the fact that we get new groups, new matchups, some things that we might not have seen before. And in this episode, we're going to go ahead, we're going to break down those groups and really just give you our impressions of what we're most excited for, what we're looking forward to, and stuff like that. So Kingdom, how are we doing, my man? I'm doing good. Um, these are some interesting groups. You know, I, I there's only 12 teams, so I keep thinking there's like really not any ways to mix things up. But um this group B is looking kind of dangerous to me, so <laughs> uh, I'm excited <laughs> to see these matches when they get started. Yeah, I'm with you a thousand percent. If we go ahead, let's take a peek at the groups right now. If we take a look at this, we have in group A, Atlanta Phase, Optic Chicago, New York Subliners, LA Thieves, Paris Legion, and London Royal Ravens. And then if you look over at group B, we've got the Dallas Empire, Toronto Ultra, Minnesota Rocker, Florida Mutineers, LAG, and Seattle Surge. So I did see that obviously with your first impression, you looked at Group B and I think I agree with you. If you're looking at which one do you not want to be in, I probably don't want to be over in Group B. Um, but overall, matchups, maybe what is to come here from both of these groups and some of the implications moving forward. What are you thinking just kind of at first glance here? Uh, it's interesting how this turned out that Chicago um, kind of was, it looks like they were picked above New York. You know, it's kind of, it, it's, I'm worried about Chicago, to be honest, because in their group, you have Atlanta, that's obviously going to be a tough task for them. New York will be a tough task when a seam comes back. Chicago could lose three matches. You know, they could go two and three if the Thieves, Paris, or London can beat them. Um, and I think the LA Thieves are up for the task, you know, and so it'll be interesting. I don't know if, you know, it's going to depend on what their roster is uh, going into the stage. But, um, and then looking at the other side, lots of implications with Dallas and Toronto. You know, I think whichever one of them carries the group, if one of them does, because I think, you know, of course, Minnesota and Florida have an opportunity here, but whichever one of them carries that group is going to be in a better position to keep that two seed, you know, and Dallas is going to want to stay ahead of the other, of New York and Toronto in points so that they can get the two seed and maybe a one or two round buy uh, at champs. And so I think this is going to be, I mean, I, I, we said it before, this is going to be a bloodbath of a, of a, a stage and the scariest part for me in Group B is, honestly, it's Seattle. Um, I think between Paris, London, the Gorillas, and Seattle, like you've got kind of the two better out of the four, in my opinion, um, in Group B. Right now, uh, you kind of could switch the Gorillas with Paris. Um, you know, But Seattle being in that group, they can pull an upset. Seattle can beat Florida. They can beat Minnesota. Um, they could even beat Dallas. You know, I... I Toronto, I think the firepower, I mean, Dallas showed at the last event that, you know, the last, the first land of the year, um, that they're <laughs> um, not too shabby on, on the sticks when it comes to <laughs> land, but this is going to be online for the stage. And so for the group stage, and it'll be interesting to see how Seattle does, if they're going to come out and play hard because they know they're not making champs. I know that's debatable right now and everybody's, you know, up in arms, but implication wise, this is going to – Chicago, they've got to win out. They, they've got to take a win over New York uh, or the Thieves, in my opinion, in order to stay in the upper bracket or the LA Thieves could steal their position. Yeah, a thousand percent. I agree with a ton of what you said. Just in case you're kind of new to these group selections, I just want to make sure I move make a blanket statement here for how teams are selected. So at the end of major four, Atlanta and Dallas were the two teams that were in that grand final. So since Atlanta won, they got first picked with who they wanted to put over in group B. So essentially, as you're looking at this graphic, Atlanta selected Toronto to go over in group B. That's the biggest team 
or the team that they didn't want to play the most. And then after that, Dallas selected. So Dallas put Optic over in Group A, which is where you were talking about. You were a little bit surprised that Chicago went over there ahead of NYSL. And then from there, it just goes back and forth based on the teams that were picked next. So Toronto didn't want to play NYSL, so they put NYSL over in Group A. Optic didn't want to play Minnesota, so they put Minnesota over in Group B. And that is also an interesting call for me, just where Rocker ended up as a whole. Because I think a lot of people would agree that Chicago, Minnesota, LA Thieves, Florida are all kind of right in the middle there with the mid four. And obviously with what Optic was able to do a little bit throughout the stage four major, they're probably the team that of those four is the highest rated right now. But after that, I think you're not quite sure what you're going to get from LA Thieves. You're not quite sure what you're going to get from Florida. And I thought the respect given to Minnesota with them being the next team picked, I think that's a little bit telling in terms of who teams think they can beat and maybe who they feel that they can't beat. Just kind of as I'm looking at this as a whole, I've gotten into a groove when it comes to stage two, three, four of looking at where Minnesota's at and judging, do I like their position or would I rather be in the other group? And as you mentioned, when you looked at the bottom two teams in group B and you see LAG and you see Seattle there, I think that those are two pretty tough matchups. Whereas if you look at the bottom two teams over in group A, you have Paris and you have London at the bottom. And those are two wins that Minnesota was able to get throughout stage four. They were also able to pair those two wins with the win over LA Thieves. And when you put those three wins together, that's what gave them the winner's bracket berth for stage four. So when I'm looking at this group B from a Minnesota perspective, You have to beat LAG and you have to beat Seattle. I think both of us would agree that those are two squads that they should probably beat right now. But you have to find a third victory somewhere. And when I'm looking at the matchups that are there, Dallas is obviously a tough matchup with what they were able to do, making it all the way to the grand finals of Group A. You also have Toronto there, which maybe didn't make it as far as some people would have thought, but they're still obviously a super dangerous squad. I think the big matchup there is going to be versus Florida. Last couple times we've seen a Rocker versus Mutineers matchup hasn't quite gone the way that Minnesota wanted it to go, especially the last time they played. So that's the biggest thing that I'm looking at here is I look at the bottom two squads. I feel like group A is a little bit easier. Look at group B. Seems like some of those squads are going to be put through the ringer there. Um, Any other thoughts just as you're looking at both of these groups here? I mean, I think in general, that's a, that's a, B is a tough group. Like I would even, I'd put the, I'd put Florida over the thieves right now, you know? And so like, Honestly, this is that group, that group B. It's interesting that Dallas, after six one in Chicago in map count, put them on the other side rather than New York and didn't yeah. give the opportunity for Chicago to be thrown onto their side rather than Minnesota. And I mean, that would have been, I mean, Dallas, Toronto, Chicago, Florida, Gorillas, and Seattle would have been crazy. That would have been <laughs> a banana, like that would have been a bananas group. But if Minnesota was flipped with Chicago, I honestly, if like New York was there and then Minnesota, I honestly would have thought that I would have thought Minnesota would have been in a better position um, just in terms of Paris, London, and even the thieves. Uh, I, I, they would have had a tough go against New York and Atlanta, but no, everybody in the league is going to have a tough go against those two teams. Right. Uh, so I, I, I think we're getting to the point where, and I said it the, in the, the last, you know, group is the group stage is that like, the top four on each side are clearly the top eight teams and it's who can steal a couple of wins. You know, it has gotten predictable in the sense that Atlanta, they're going to make it out. Even if they don't, they get the one seed anyway, but um, Chicago is up in the air. You know, Minnesota is up in the air. Um, LA thieves are definitely up in the air. And so there is this weird, like 
what are we going to get? You know, and I, I think the respect shown to Minnesota, to your point, was good. Um, if there's ever been a time, I know we say it every time, but if there's ever been a time um, for them to pull a nice 3-2 or even like a steal a 4-1, you know, uh, get a win over Toronto or get a win over Dallas um, online, especially like take advantage of that opportunity and go to that fifth major as high as possible in terms of where you start. Um, I still think Minnesota can create some distance and, and stay safe in sixth. And I'm sure that's what they want to do. So this is going to be a tough stage. Yeah. This, the last thing that you said right there is another really big implication. Obviously, as we look forward towards champs right now, you're looking at the difference. There are 20 point difference between Minnesota and LA thieves. And if you're looking at those two squads and you look at where LA thieves is at, with having Paris and London in their group, those should be two pretty easy wins for them to get. And if you're looking at Minnesota, I'm not quite sure any of those teams in Group B are a given. So I think when it comes to implications, obviously the bottom four teams are probably out. It seems like the top eight pool is already selected, but... If you're looking at things like who's going to get second, third, and fourth between Dallas and Toronto and NYSL, those teams are all super close in the CDL standings. And between Minnesota and LA Thieves, those two squads are super close. So if you're looking at this from a Minnesota perspective, you have to clutch up. You have to beat those couple squads that are under you so that you can enter champs ahead of LA Thieves and keep the current spot where you're at. So with that, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another group selection show breakdown. This is now the fifth and final one, although I'm pretty sure when champs rolls around, maybe we'll do something for champs. We'll see where that comes. But I am Icon. Thank you guys so much for checking out this episode here with Kingdom. We will see you guys in the next episode of the Rotation Tuesday night podcast. Make sure you check us out there and enjoy the matches from stage five.